Today, I'm going to talk about corporate campaigning as an effective way of securing change for animals and factory farms worldwide. There are several reasons why we do corporate campaigns. They're easier than changing public opinion. Imagine trying to get millions of consumers to align on a single behavior, to purchase, for example, only cage-free eggs. If you can get a company to source only cage-free eggs, you immediately change the behavior of millions of consumers by default. Corporate campaigns are easier than changing the law. In the same amount of time it took to ban cages in a few US states, we were able to get corporate cage-free policies from virtually every major food company in the US. And this impact is spreading across the globe. The OWA has gotten over 2,200 companies to make policies. Another reason corporate campaigns work is because companies are vulnerable to public pressure. Consumer opinions matter to a company. And it's not controversial to say that animals should not be treated in the absolute worst way imaginable. So it's usually fairly easy to get the public on our side. Finally, corporate campaigns impact millions and millions of chickens. Chickens endure some of the worst suffering of all animals subjected to factory farming. A corporate policy will not only affect all chickens in that company's supply chain, it can also influence other companies to release policies. So now I'll talk about what makes up a corporate campaign and what steps are involved. Before beginning a campaign, we attempt to initiate dialogue with a company. If a company is willing to negotiate with us and discuss welfare improvements through dialogue, this is always better. It costs less money and it takes less time. And then we can save our resources for campaigning against difficult companies that won't engage. When choosing a campaign target, there are several things to consider. Is the target winnable? You probably don't want to start with the most ambitious target ever. But you'll also want to consider, will winning impact a significant number of animals? This can be a difficult balance to strike since huge companies that would have the most impact will also be the toughest campaigns. If corporate campaigning is new to you, you might wanna start with small to medium sized targets and build up some wins before going after a huge company. Other things to consider when choosing a target are to make sure that your toolkit of tactics will work. For example, does the company have a strong social media presence? Can you find executive emails? And does the company have a brand image? A positive brand image, I mean. Companies that have negative brand images are less likely to be upset if you associate their name with animal cruelty. You might also check to see if the company has locations near you where you can hold a protest. Preparing for a campaign involves a lot of research. We want to know our target really, really well. So we research its employees and executives, and we find out the company's emails, phone numbers, social media accounts, locations, slogans, and we dig deep into executives. For example, we want to find out if an executive sits on another company's board of directors. We also want to know what the company values what sort of public image it tries to portray. We can yet then use all of this information to devise a strategy or battle plan. Once our research is complete and we have a strategy, we launch the campaign. We let the company know about the campaign through email and by sharing a petition. And we let its customers know by leaving comments on its social media accounts and by holding protests in front of store locations. 
Social media actions are a really important part of our campaigns. They educate consumers about the issue and they tarnish a company's reputation. Companies use their social media accounts to communicate with their customers and to establish a brand identity. So they can get frustrated and embarrassed when we call out their animal cruelty problem online. Towards the start of the campaign, and also at key points during a longer campaign, we hold what we call days of action. We ask all of our volunteers and staff to participate in online actions directed at our target. When companies get thousands of comments, tweets, and emails in a short period of time, they can get overwhelmed, and sometimes this alone causes them to release a policy. Online ads are another way to publicly shame a company. They're not too expensive, and you can direct them at a company's employees, franchisees, or customers. We have purchased ads on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Google. And then to make sure that a company's leaders see the ads, we take a screenshot and email them to them. Protests are another powerful tactic in corporate campaigns. This protest was organized in Nigeria by APON for the Yum Brands campaign. And this one was held in Milan, Italy by Animal Equality Italia. Getting media attention during, during a campaign um, can be difficult, but it's a really great strategy because it publicly shames the company and puts pressure on them to release a policy. This is one from the YUM campaign. So in a corporate campaign, it's important to save some of your scariest tactics for later. If a company doesn't respond after a period of campaigning, you can let them know that you're moving to phase two of the campaign. If executives perceive your campaign as getting increasingly scary, they're more likely to be in a rush to release a policy. Direct executive targeting can be very effective at this stage. We buy URLs and make individual websites for executives and board members, and then we share them via email. We also inform leadership's business affiliations about their connection to animal cruelty. Another tactic we save for later in a campaign is secondary targeting. This is when you go after companies, organizations, or people who are connected to your target. Secondary targeting often begins with an email, and then from there it can escalate into campaign actions. This can embarrass a company and exert pressure on them from a different angle. There are many other tactics that can be utilized in a campaign, including attaching door hangers in an executive's neighborhood, hanging up posters, and running mobile billboards. There's also a lot you can do with just a computer. These are some images that different groups made for the YUM campaign. Several groups put together powerful videos as well. The corporate campaigning simply works. In the US in 2008, less than 5% of all eggs came from cage-free hens. Now, about 30% of eggs are from hens not confined to battery cages. And we estimate that by 2025, over half of egg production in the US will be from cage-free hens. We've also seen progress in Europe. In 2014, just over 40% of eggs produced in the EU were from cage-free hens. That number is now over 50% and projected to surpass 60% by 2023. In addition to thousands of country-specific or regional corporate commitments, the OWA has secured global commitments from some of the largest companies in the world. 
Some of these policies have 2026 or even 2030 deadlines. But as they begin to transition to cage-free systems, millions and millions of hens will be free from battery cages. Global commitments can be used as an example in tougher regions and can help put pressure on regional companies. And a few years ago, SAFSI ran and won the first Africa-based corporate campaign. In less than two months, they got famous brands, a large parent company that owns Wimpy, Mug and Bean, Steers, and House of Coffees to release a cage-free policy. Sometimes corporate campaigns need to be adapted. Tactics that work in one country may not be legal or advisable in others. In the OWA, member groups adapt our global campaigns to fit their regions. So in, in countries where aggressive campaigning is illegal, groups focus on engaging in corporate dialogue or campaigns that target an issue rather than a company. And during COVID, countries that could not protest in person focused on digital actions, such as printing and cutting out cage drawings and snapping photos of them in front of restaurants. And in some countries, before corporate campaigns can begin, it's necessary to raise awareness first. And activists are focused on movement building that can then be utilized in a campaign. With creativity, collaboration, and persistence, you can customize campaigns to fit your region and change the world for chickens. Thank you.